dear listeners, and welcome to our podcast. I'm Sophia. And I'm James. Today, we're starting a very important and interesting podcast about our environment. Yes, we will talk about environmental issues. Do you know what environmental issues means? Good question, Sophia. Environmental issues are problems with our natural world, like the air, water, plants, and animals. When we say issues, we mean problems that need solutions. That's right. So, in this podcast, we will learn more about these problems and how we can help solve them. To make it easy to understand, we'll talk about one topic at a time. Today, we will start with something called pollution. Pollution is a big word, but don't worry, we will explain it step by step. Pollution happens when our environment gets dirty or harmful. This can happen in many ways. Can you think of some, Sophia? Sure, there are different kinds of pollution, like air pollution, water pollution, and land pollution. Exactly. Let's start with air pollution. Have you ever noticed a lot of smoke coming from cars or factories? Yes, I have. That smoke is a kind of air pollution. When there are too many bad gases in the air, it can make it hard to breathe and can harm our health. That's true. And it's not just smoke from cars and factories. Sometimes people burn things like plastic, which also makes the air dirty. Now, let's talk about water pollution. This happens when our rivers, lakes, and oceans get dirty. Right. Sometimes people throw trash into the water. Other times, chemicals from factories end up in rivers and lakes. This can hurt fish and other animals that live in the water. Yes, and it can also make the water unsafe for us to drink. Lastly, we have land pollution. This is when the ground gets dirty. Can you think of an example, Sophia? Sure. When people throw trash on the ground instead of in a bin, that's land pollution. It can make places look ugly and can harm animals that live on the land. You're right. Now, let's talk about why it's important to care about pollution. Pollution can make our planet a very unhealthy place to live. It can make us sick and can harm animals and plants. And if we don't do something about it, these problems will only get worse. So, what can we do to help? There are many simple things we can do every day to reduce pollution. Yes, like recycling. Instead of throwing everything away, we can separate paper, plastic, and glass so they can be used again. Also, we can use less plastic. For example, we can use clock bags instead of plastic bags when we go shopping. And we can save energy by turning off lights and electronics when we don't need them. These small actions can make a big difference if everyone does them. Absolutely. And that brings us to the end of part one of our podcast on environmental issues. Remember, every little action counts when it comes to protecting our environment. We talked about pollution. And now we're going to discuss another important topic, climate change. Climate change is something we hear about a lot these days. But what exactly is climate change, James? Good question, Sophia. Climate change means a big change in the Earth's weather patterns over a long period of time. It's not just about the weather being hot one day and cold the next. It's about changes that last for many years, even centuries. That's right. And when we talk about climate change today, we often mean global warming. Global warming is when the Earth's temperature gets hotter than it should be. Yes, and this increase in temperature affects everything. It can change the weather, the seasons, and even the lives of plants and animals. But why is the Earth getting hotter? One big reason is something called greenhouse gases. Have you heard of them, James? Yes, I have. Greenhouse gases are gases in the atmosphere, like carbon dioxide and methane, that trap heat from the sun. This is a natural process and it keeps our planet warm enough to live on. Exactly. But the problem is human activities like burning fossil fuels for energy, cutting down trees, and farming produce a lot of extra greenhouse gases. This makes the Earth warmer than it should be. That's right. And when the Earth gets too warm, it can cause a lot of problems. For example, it can melt ice in the Arctic and Antarctic. 
This makes sea levels rise, which can flood cities near the coast. Yes, and it can also cause extreme weather. This means more powerful storms, more intense heat waves, and heavier rains that can lead to floods. Another problem is that it can harm animals and plants. Some animals might not be able to live in warmer temperatures and could become endangered or extinct. And it's not just animals, climate change can also affect our food supply. Changes in weather can make it harder to grow crops like wheat, rice, and corn. This can lead to food shortages and higher prices. So, climate change can affect everyone, no matter where they live. Now, let's talk about what we can do to help slow down climate change. There are many things we can do to make a difference. One thing we can do is to use less energy. We can turn off lights, computers, and TVs when we're not using them. We can also use energy-efficient appliances and light bulbs. Another thing we can do is to use renewable energy. Renewable energy comes from sources that don't run out, like the sun, wind, and water. Yes, solar panels and wind turbines are great examples of how we can use renewable energy. They don't produce greenhouse gases, so they don't contribute to climate change. We can also plant trees. Trees absorb carbon dioxide, one of the main greenhouse gases. More trees mean less carbon dioxide in the air. And we can support policies and leaders who are working to fight climate change. This means voting for people who care about the environment and supporting laws that reduce greenhouse gases. Yes, every little bit helps. If we all do our part, we can make a big difference. That's true. And it's important to remember that while climate change is a big problem, it's not too late to do something about it. We just need to act now. So what did we learn so far? We learned that climate change is a big, long-term change in the Earth's weather patterns. It's mostly caused by human activities that produce extra greenhouse gases. And we learned that climate change can cause many problems, like rising sea levels, extreme weather, and harm to plants and animals. But we also learned that there are many things we can do to help slow it down. Climate change is a big topic, but it's important to understand it so we can help make our planet a better place. We talked about climate change, and now we're going to discuss another important environmental issue, deforestation. Deforestation is a big word, but don't worry, we will explain it in a simple way. James, can you tell us what deforestation means? Sure, Sophia. Deforestation means cutting down trees in a large area. This often happens in forests. When we cut down trees and don't replace them, the forest gets smaller and smaller. That's right. Forests are very important to our planet. They provide homes for many animals and plants, and they also help us by cleaning the air we breathe. Yes, trees take in carbon dioxide, which is a greenhouse gas, and give out oxygen, which we need to breathe. So, when we cut down to many trees, it can cause big problems for the environment. One of the main reasons for deforestation is to clear land for farming. People cut down trees to grow crops and raise animals. This is especially common in tropical rainforests. Another reason is to get wood for building houses and making products like paper and furniture. This is called logging. Mining is also a reason for deforestation. Sometimes, people need to cut down trees to get to the minerals and metals in the ground. And sometimes, forests are cleared to build roads and cities as the population grows. Now that we know what deforestation is and why it happens, let's talk about the impact it has on our environment. One big impact is the loss of habitat for animals and plants. When trees are cut down, animals lose their homes. Some animals might not be able to survive without the forest. Yes, this can lead to a decrease in biodiversity. Biodiversity means the variety of life in a particular habitat or ecosystem. When animals and plants lose their homes, it can reduce the number of different species in an area. Another impact is soil erosion. Trees help hold the soil together with their roots. When trees are removed, the soil can be washed away by rain. 
This makes the land less fertile and can lead to landslides. Deforestation also affects the water cycle. Trees play a big role in absorbing and releasing water. Without trees, there is less moisture in the air, which can lead to drier climates and droughts. And as we mentioned earlier, trees absorb carbon dioxide. When we cut down trees, there are fewer trees to take in carbon dioxide, which can contribute to climate change. Now, let's talk about what we can do to help stop deforestation. There are many things we can do to make a difference. One thing we can do is to use products made from recycled materials. This reduces the need to cut down more trees. We can also support companies that use sustainable practices. Sustainable practices mean using resources in a way that does not harm the environment. Another thing we can do is to plant trees. Planting trees helps to replace those that have been cut down and can restore damaged forests. Yes, and we can also support laws and policies that protect forests. This means voting for leaders who care about the environment and supporting organizations that work to save forests. Educating others about the importance of forests and the impacts of deforestation is also very important. The more people know, the more they can help. And remember, every little action counts. Even small changes in our daily lives can make a big difference. We learned that deforestation is the cutting down of trees in a large area and it happens for reasons like farming, logging, mining, and building. And we learned that deforestation has many negative impacts like loss of habitat, decreased biodiversity, soil erosion, and contributing to climate change. But we also learned that there are many things we can do to help stop deforestation. We talked about deforestation. And now, we're going to discuss another important environmental issue, plastic pollution. Plastic pollution is a big problem that affects our environment in many ways. But first, James, can you explain what plastic pollution is? Sure, Sophia. Plastic pollution happens when plastic products are not disposed of properly and end up in the environment, especially in the oceans. This pollution is harmful to wildlife, human health, and the planet. That's right. Plastic is a material that doesn't break down easily. It can stay in the environment for hundreds of years. This makes plastic pollution a long-term problem. Let's start by talking about how plastic pollution affects our oceans. Have you ever heard of the Great Pacific Garbage Patch, Sophia? Yes, I have. The Great Pacific Garbage Patch is a huge area in the Pacific Ocean where a lot of plastic waste has collected. It's like a big, floating island of trash. That's right. It's estimated to be twice the size of Texas. The plastic in the ocean can harm marine life in many ways. For example, animals like fish, turtles, and birds can mistake plastic for food. When they eat it, it can block their stomachs and make them sick or even kill them. Yes, and some animals get tangled in plastic waste, like nets and plastic rings, which can injure them or make it hard for them to move and find food. Plastic pollution also affects human health. When plastic breaks down into tiny pieces called microplastics, these can get into our water and food. This can be harmful to our health. Right, microplastics have been found in fish, shellfish, and even in the salt we use in our food. Scientists are still studying the effects, but they believe that microplastics could be harmful to our bodies. Now, let's talk about the sources of plastic pollution. One big source is single-use plastics. These are plastic products that are used once and then thrown away, like plastic bags, bottles, straws, and packaging. Yes, and because they are used so briefly, they create a lot of waste. Another source is plastic litter. When people don't throw plastic items in the trash, they can end up on the ground and eventually in our waterways. Industrial plastic waste is also a problem. Factories that make plastic products often produce waste that isn't disposed of properly, adding to the pollution. Now that we know the sources and effects of plastic pollution, let's talk about what we can do to help reduce it. One important thing we can do is to use less plastic. For example, we can use reusable bags, bottles, 
and containers instead of single-use plastic ones. Yes, and we can also choose products with less plastic packaging. Buying in bulk or choosing items with minimal packaging can make a big difference. Another way to help is by recycling. Recycling plastic helps to reduce the amount of new plastic being made and keeps plastic out of the environment. It's also important to clean up plastic litter. Participating in community cleanup events or simply picking up plastic waste when we see it can help reduce pollution. Educating others about the dangers of plastic pollution and how to reduce it is also very important. The more people know, the more they can help. Supporting laws and policies that reduce plastic waste is another way to make a big impact. This can include bans on single-use plastics or incentives for using reusable items. Yes, and we can also support companies that are working to reduce plastic waste by choosing to buy from them. Remember, every small action adds up. If we all do our part, we can make a big difference in reducing plastic pollution. So, what did we learn so far? We learned that plastic pollution is a major environmental issue that affects our oceans, wildlife, and human health. We also learned that it's caused by things like single-use plastics, plastic litter, and industrial waste. And we learned that there are many things we can do to help reduce plastic pollution, like using less plastic, recycling, cleaning up litter, educating others, and supporting policies and companies that reduce plastic waste. Plastic pollution is a big problem, but if we all work together, we can help make our planet cleaner and healthier. We talked about plastic pollution, and now we're going to discuss another important topic renewable energy renewable energy is energy that comes from sources that can be replenished naturally unlike fossil fuels which can run out renewable energy sources are sustainable and can help protect our environment that's right renewable energy is very important for our future it helps reduce pollution combat climate change and provides a cleaner and healthier environment so, let's start by talking about some common types of renewable energy. One of the most well-known types is solar energy, James. Can you tell us more about it? Sure, Sophia. Solar energy comes from the sun. We can capture this energy using solar panels, which converts sunlight into electricity. Solar energy is clean and abundant, meaning there's a lot of it available. Yes, and solar panels can be installed on rooftops in large solar farms, or even on portable devices. This makes solar energy very versatile. Another type of renewable energy is wind energy. Wind turbines capture the energy from the wind and convert it into electricity. Wind farms, which are groups of wind turbines, can be found on land and offshore. Wind energy is also very clean and sustainable. It's especially useful in areas where there is a lot of wind. Hydropower, or water power, is another type of renewable energy. It uses the energy of moving water, like rivers and waterfalls, to generate electricity. This is done by building dams or using water wheels. Hydropower has been used for thousands of years and is a very reliable source of energy. It's especially useful in countries with a lot of rivers and lakes. Another interesting type of renewable energy is geothermal energy. This energy comes from the heat inside the Earth. We can use this heat to generate electricity or to heat buildings directly. Geothermal energy is very efficient and has a small environmental footprint. It's a great option in areas with a lot of volcanic activity or hot springs. Biomass is another renewable energy source. It comes from organic materials like wood, crop waste, and even animal manure. These materials can be burned to produce heat or converted into biofuels for transportation. Biomass can help reduce waste and provide a sustainable energy source. However, it's important to manage it carefully to avoid negative impacts on the environment. Now that we've talked about different types of renewable energy, let's discuss why they're important for our environment. One big reason is that renewable energy helps reduce greenhouse gas emissions. Unlike fossil fuels, which release a lot of carbon dioxide when burned, 
Renewable energy sources produce little or no greenhouse gases. This helps combat climate change by reducing the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. It also improves air quality, which is better for our health. Renewable energy also reduces our dependence on fossil fuels, which can be expensive and have negative environmental impacts. By using renewable energy, we can create a more sustainable and secure energy future. Another benefit is that renewable energy can create jobs and boost local economies. Installing and maintaining renewable energy systems requires skilled workers, which can create new opportunities. And renewable energy systems can be installed in remote areas, providing electricity to places that might not have access to the traditional power grid. This can improve the quality of life for many people. Now, let's talk about what we can do to support renewable energy. One thing we can do is to use renewable energy in our homes. If possible, we can install solar panels or use wind turbines to generate our own electricity. We can also choose to buy green energy from our utility companies. Many companies offer the option to buy electricity that comes from renewable sources. Another way to help is by conserving energy. Using less energy means that less needs to be produced, which can reduce the demand for fossil fuels and make it easier to switch to renewable sources. Supporting policies and laws that promote renewable energy is also very important. This can include subsidies for renewable energy projects, tax incentives for using renewable energy, and regulations that limit fossil fuel use. Educating others about the benefits of renewable energy and how to support it is also key. The more people know, the more they can help. Remember, every small action counts. By supporting renewable energy, we can help create a cleaner, healthier, and more sustainable future for everyone. So, what did we learn until now? We learned it about different types of renewable energy, like solar, wind, hydropower, geothermal, and biomass. We also learned why renewable energy is important for our environment and how we can support it. And now, we're going to summarize everything we've talked about in our podcast on environmental issues. We've covered a lot of important topics, and we hope you found the information helpful and interesting. Let's start by summarizing our first episode on pollution. Sure. In in this episode, we talked about different types of pollution, air, water, and land pollution. We learned that pollution is harmful to our health, animals, and plants. We also discussed simple ways to reduce pollution, like recycling, using less plastic, and saving energy. Yes, pollution is a big problem but we can all do our part to help reduce it. Next, we talked about climate change in our second episode. James, can you remind us what we learned about climate change? Of course, climate change refers to long-term changes in the Earth's weather patterns, primarily caused by human activities like burning fossil fuels and deforestation. These activities increase greenhouse gases, leading to global warming. We learned about the impacts of climate change, such as rising sea levels, extreme weather, and harm to wildlife and crops. We also discussed ways to combat climate change, like using renewable energy, conserving energy, and supporting environmental policies. Climate change is a serious issue, but we can take action to slow it down. Then, we focused on deforestation. James, what are the key points we covered? We learned that deforestation is the large-scale cutting down of trees, often for farming, logging, mining, and building. Deforestation leads to habitat loss, decreased biodiversity, soil erosion, and contributes to climate change. To help stop deforestation, we can use recycled products, support sustainable practices, plant trees, and support laws that protect forests. Yes, protecting our forests is crucial for a healthy planet. In our fourth episode, we discussed plastic pollution. James, can you summarize that for us? Sure. Plastic pollution happens when plastic waste ends up in the environment, especially in oceans. It harms wildlife, human health, and the planet. We talked about the sources of plastic pollution, like single-use plastics and industrial waste. 
to reduce plastic pollution, we can use less plastic, recycle, clean up litter, and support policies that reduce plastic waste. Plastic pollution is a big problem, but small changes in our daily lives can make a big difference. Finally, we talked about renewable energy. James, what did we learn? We learned about different types of renewable energy, like solar, wind, hydropower, geothermal, and biomass. Renewable energy is important because it reduces greenhouse gas emissions, combats climate change, and provides a sustainable energy future. We discussed ways to support renewable energy, like using renewable energy in our homes, conserving energy, and supporting policies that promote renewable energy. Renewable energy is key to a sustainable future. Now, let's think about the big picture. What have we learned from this podcast? We've learned that our environment faces many challenges, like pollution, climate change, deforestation, and plastic pollution. But we've also learned that there are many things we can do to help protect our planet. That's right. Small actions, like recycling, using less plastic, conserving energy, and supporting environmental policies can make a big difference. It's important to stay informed and take action to protect our environment. We hope this podcast has inspired you to think about how you can help protect our planet. Every little bit helps and together we can make a big difference. Thank you for joining us on this journey. We hope you'll continue to learn about and support environmental causes. If you have any questions, ideas, or feedback, please send them to us. We love hearing from you. Yes, thank you for listening. Let's all do our part to protect our environment and create a healthier, more sustainable future for everyone. Goodbye and take care of our planet.